Ready? I'll just do a quick Jaidwani because <laughs> I've already done Jaidwani twice. Um, Jai Shri Sachin Nandan Gaur Hari Ki Jai Shri Shri Radha Vinor Vihari Ju Ki Jai Jai Shri Guru Dev Ki Jai Jai Shri Param Guru Dev Ki Jai Jai Shri Prabhu Par Ki Jai Shri Rupanu Gorya Guru Varga Ki Jai Shri Bhakti Vallabha Tirtha Gosai Maharaj Ki Jai Shri Bhakti Daita Madhav Gosai Maharaj Ki Jai Shri Bhakti Pramod Puri Gosai Maharaj Ki Jai Sa Parshad Shri Prabhu Par Ki Jai Sa Parshad Shri Gaur Hari Ki Jai Shri uh, Raghunandan Thakur Ki Jai Tadiya Shubhatiro Bhav Titi Ki Jai Shri Vangshi Das Babaji Maharaj Ki Jai Tadiya Shubhatiro Bhav Titi Ki Jai Shri Hari Nam Sankirtan Ki Jai Shri Giriraj Maharaj Ki Jai Shri Tulsi Maharani Vrinda Devi Ki Jai Hari Nam Sankirtan Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishna Vrinda Ki Jai Shri Nitai Gaur Primanande Hari Hari Go so today is a very auspicious day of Shila Raghunandan Thakur and Vangshi, Vangshi, uh, Vangshi Das Babaji Maharaj's disappearance day. Right, let me just double check. <laughs> I don't want to get anything wrong. Yeah, let you see. Let me open up my calendar. I'm pretty sure. Maybe I have to open it up here. Okay, calendar.google.com. And I'm just giving a little more time for people to join. <laughs> Oops, what the heck? Let's go to the today. Do you like how I have my calendar set up? I have, these are all the different mohurtas. Brahma mohurta, Samudra mohurta, Rudra mohurta, Ahi mohurta, like that. Let's take this off though. Yes, it is Vangsi Das Babaji Maharaj's Disappearance Day. Cool. All right, so what am I doing? Where are we? So this time I'm not gonna be sharing my screen and I don't have a phone unfortunately, so I can't record the screen, you're just going to have to watch me read. <laughs> but I'm reading from this book, Sri Chaitanya and His Associates by Srila Bhakti Balabhatirtha Balabhatir Goswami Maharaj. Sri Raghunandan Thakur. Vyoha Strit... <laughs> Vyuha stritya pradyumna priya narma sako bhavat chakre lila sahayam yo radha madavayor vraje shi chaitanya dvita shi chaitanya dvita tanu sa eva ragunandana. The third member of the Chatur Vyuha, Prajumna, took part in Radha Madhav's lila and Vraj as Krishna's intimate friend, our priya narma saka. He has now appeared as Raghunandan, whose body is not different from that of Sri Chaitanya. That's from Gaur Ganadesh Tipika, verse 70. Raghunandan, Raghunandan's father, Mukundadas. Raghunandan was born into a family of physicians. And there's a, oh, it says, see chapter Anara Harisarkar Thakur. So he was born into a family of physicians in the Shaka year 1432, which is 1511 AD. His father's name was Mukundadas. His mother's name was, is unknown. Mukundadas was Narahari Sarkar Thakur's older brother. In the 15th chapter of the Madhya Lila of Chaitanya Charitamrita, it is clearly said that Mukundadas was a physician, was a physician to the king. So here's an excerpt from the 15th chapter. Externally, he appears to be engaged in government service as a physician to the king. But in his inner life, he is filled with divine love. Who can know the extent of his love? That's Chaitanya Chaitamita 215.120. Once, when Mukunda Das was engaged in treating the king, 
he saw a peacock feather and fainted. This incident is also described in Chaitanya Charitamrita, the next verse, verse 121 in chapter 15, Madhya Lila. On the, on the Bordwan Katwa rail line, Shripat Shikanda, that Shripat Shikanda station comes first, and then the Shikanda. Okay. I've been there a bunch of times, actually, maybe like six times or something like that. Shri Kunda, very beautiful village. Mukunda Das's home is about one mile from the Shri Kunda station. Raghunandan Thakur took birth on the Vasant Panchami day. His uncle Narahari took a great deal of interest in raising Raghunandan, for whom he had much affection. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu indicated that one senior seniority depends on the depth of devotion by telling Mukunda, Mukunda Das's son to be really his father. He said that your son is actually your father. The three most important devotees from Shikanda were Mukunda Das, Raghu Nandan, and Narahari. Mahaprabhu asked Mukunda Das, uh, Are you Raghu Nandan's father? and he your son? Or is he your father and you his son? Tell me so that I can put my doubts to rest. Mukunda answered, Raghu Nandan is my father and I am his son. Rest assured, whatever devotion we have comes from him. Therefore, I see him as my father. When he heard Mukunda Das's answer, Mahaprabhu was thrilled and said, he from whom we imbibe devotion should always be considered our senior. That's from the same chapter, Madhilila 15. Um, that's verses 112 to 117. Raghu Nandan and the Gopinath Diti. This pastime is so sweet. So this is now same chapter, chapter 15, verse 131. This is the quote. Mahaprabhu gave Raghunandan the service of deity worship. He constantly engaged in the service of Sri Krishna. He had no other intentions. Hmm. From his early childhood, Raghunandan Thakur would feed the family's Gopinath deity, Ladus. Uddhav Das has written a song in which this Leela is described. Oh, this song is so beautiful. I had a recording of, have you ever heard of Suman Patacharya? He's a uh, Lila Kirtaniya, and he sings the song, the melody is just, I wonder if I could find it. No, I'm not going to do that now. <laughs> but yeah, I want to translate this song. Mukunda Das lived in the village of Shikanda with his household deity Gopinath. One day he had to go somewhere for work and he called Raghunandan to do the service. He said, In this house we worship Krishna, so I want, I want you to be sure to give him something to eat. And then he left. Raghunandan did as his father had, had ordered and made the offering to the deity. Raghunandan was just a child, and in his simplicity he said to Gopinath, Eat, eat. Krishna is controlled by love. And so he did as the child told him and ate everything on the plate without leaving a grain of rice. When Mukunda Das returned, he asked the boy to bring him the prasad. He asked him to bring him the prasad from the offering he had made. The child answered, Father, he ate everything and left no remnants. Mukunda was so astonished at his child's wondrous words that he asked him to make another offering. This time, after he left the house, he returned and hid to watch what his son did. Raghunandan joyfully placed a ladu in Krishna's hand and said in a commanding voice, Eat! Eat! When Krishna had, when Krishna had eaten half of the ladu, Mukunda Das came in the doorway. Mukunda saw that Krishna did not take another bite and that the half-eaten ladu remained in his hand. This caused him to be filled with love. He embraced his child, and as tears of joys rained from his eyes, spoke to him in a broken voice. 
To this day, fortunate people come to Sri Khanda to, live, to see the half-eaten ladu in Gopinath's hands. Raghunandan is not different from Cupid himself, says Uddhav Das with great feeling. All the Mahantas felt fascinated to see the Gopinath Didi who Raghu, whom Raghunandan had fed ladus. That was, uh, that's uh, 925 Bhakti Ratnakar. Do you want to see the... Um, let's, let's, I, I, I want to show you this video, um, this, this kirtan, I mean. It's such a sweet kirtan. It's been a long time since I've seen it, though. I'm, I'm just checking out on YouTube if it's there. Uh, Bhakta Raghunandan Suman. Patacharya, there. Yes, I got it. Check this out. Let me share my screen. Oops. There. Bhakta Raghunandan. See? Uh, it's divided into two parts. Yeah, this is it. Let's see if we can find it. This, this, it's so beautiful. I'm trying to find the song. It's a song by Udav Das. Anyways, I, I'll try to find it sometime, and then maybe, um, yeah, I'd love to translate it for the Gaudiya Kirtan mailing list, this song by Udav Das that Srila Bhakti Balabhati Goswami was just quoting. Okay, let me, let's go back to reading. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, the melody is really beautiful, though. I, uh, okay, so other miraculous events. Narahari Sarkar Thakur, so that's Raghunandan Thakur's uncle, his father's younger brother, Mukunda Das's younger brother. Narahari Sarkar Thakur gave honey to Nityananda Prabhu and Mahaprabhu from the ponds right next to his home. This pond became known as Madhu Pushkarini. The legend is told that a kadamba tree which grew right next to this pond always had two flowers blooming regardless of the season by, Raghunand by Raghunandan's miraculous powers. According to the Gaudiya Vaishnav Abhitan, another miraculous event took place in Raghunandan's life. One day, Abhiram Thakur came to, Shri, uh, came to Shri Kanda and paid his obeisances to Raghunandan. Then he embraced him and melted with feelings of prem. Raghunandan started to dance and sing kirtan, and while doing so, one of his ankle bells slipped from his foot and went flying off, landing four miles away in Akaihat, near his disciple Krishnadasa's house. Later, in order to commemorate this, the event, a tank was excavated in that village and given the name Nupur Kund. <laughs> That's a long distance. <laughs> Mahaprabhu, the father of Sankirtan, gave his adopted son Raghunandan Thakur the authority to offer the garland on the day before the Sankirtan Yajna, the Adivas day, to make the final offering at the Yajna's end. And look at this Thakurji. I think this is the Takoji at Akai Hut. I love these little <laughs> midget. God, let's see if I can. Yeah, these midget Mahabhutis are so sweet. Uh, can you see it? Uh, it's hard to get the right angle. See? <laughs> Mahabhu's head is like one-third the size of his whole body. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. So, where were we? Raghunandan Thakur accompanied the Bengali devotees to Puri every year during the Chaturmasya. He would dance with his uncle Narahari at the Ratyatra festival in a group formed by the residents of Sri Kanda. He participated in the Keturi festival organized by Nartam Das Thakur at Gadadar Das's festival in Katwa and at the commemorative festival for Narahari Sarkar Thakur in Sri Kanda. Some people said, anyone who is dear to Raghunandan will, will win Mahaprabhu's mercy for life after life. Others said, Raghunandan is so merciful that he gives life to the humblest and fallen. Some said, what humility, there is no one who is his equal. And others, he is as beautiful as Cupid himself. That's from Bhakti Ratnakar 9660. Srila Raghunandan Thakur had great affection for Srinivasacharya. Prior to his disappearance, he consoled Srinivasacharya that despite the difficult times, he would be able to spread Vaishnavism in the future. A difficult time is coming in which people will succumb to various doubts. Narahari Prabhu wrote in his Krishna Bhajanamrita. Krishna Chaitanya Chandrena Nityanandena Samhrite Avatare kalavasmin Vaishnava sarva evahi Pavishanti sadog dvigna kale kale dine dine Vraya sandigta hridaya Uttameta ramadhyama That's verses 3 and 4 of Narahari's Krishna Bhajanamrita. Once, once our Lord Krishna Chaitanya and his companion Nityananda Prabhu, once they... Um, completed their pastimes in the material world, the Vaishnavas in this age of Kali will become more anxious with every passing day. Whether very advanced, somewhat advanced, or neophyte, their hearts will nearly always be filled with doubt. But don't let this worry you. Lord Goranga will accomplish many great works through you. I bless you that you, will, that you remain long on this earth, and that you and your followers protect our Lord's religion. Those who are opposed to devotion to Krishna will become devotees by your influence, and they will take shelter of you. That's Bhakti Ratnakar 13, verses 174 to 179. Raghunandan Thakur bequeathed the service of his Gaur Gopal deity to his son Kanai Thakur, and then left this world on the fourth day of the waxing moon, Shukla Chaturthi, and the month of Shravan. Kanai Thakur gave a feast as a part of his father's last rites. Raghunandan slowly became hidden to mortal eyes while repeating the names of Sri Krishna Chaitanya again and again. How glorious is the day of Shravan, Shukla Chaturthi! Will anyone not sing the glories of Raghunandan Thakur? That's from Bhakti Ratnakar 13, 183-184. Jai, Raghunandan Thakur Ki Jai. I think this must be the Gorgopal Didi. This, this tiny Mahaprabhu. <laughs> um, all right. You want to see some pictures? Let's find some pictures. Uh, Raghunandan. Uh, Shri Kanda, there. If I write, if I just write Shri Kanda, we'll just get pictures of Shri Kanda, <laughs> the condensed yogurt sweet thing. Ah, look at that Mahaprabhu! Isn't that the most ad adorable Mahaprabhu Vigra you've ever seen? <laughs> Let's see, here's another picture. I love it, I love it, I love it. I guess that's the Gorgopal Didi, yeah? Okay. So, let's see. Um, let's see if we, c there's a picture of the Madhu Pushkarini.
Uh, I want to go there again now. Shikanda. There's, I think, three different temples we go to in Shikanda. There's Madhu Pushkarini. See, that's just right outside his house. That lake became honey, turned into honey. Okay, so now let's get back to reading. We'll read about Bhangsi Das Babaji Maharaj. Well, that's not a very good picture. There's another picture of Madhu Pushkarini. Okay. Let's see the, the Gopinath deity that he was making the offering to. Ah, uh, yeah. Let's 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 get get go get on with our reading. <coughs> All right. So, Vangsi Das Babaji Maharaj. Oh, before we read about him, we want to see what he have darshan of him. See a picture of him. Vangsi Das Babaji. Let's just type Vangsi Das Babaji. I think that's there. Okay, so here is a picture of Vangsi Das Babaji Maharaj, whose disappearance day it is also today. Is there a better picture? See, there's Vangsi Das Babaji Maharaj. Okay. So. Shri Vangsi Das Babaji. This article is based on other articles that previously appeared in the old Gaudiya magazine and various statements made by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Goswami Thakur and his disciples. The Paramahamsa Avadhut. Shilavangsi Das Babaji Maharaj appeared in the village of Maj Majidpur in the Myaman Singh district of current Bangladesh, near the city of Jamalpur. The names of Babaji Maharaj's parents are not known. Babaji Maharaj came to Navadip from East Bengal. He was a Paramahamsa Vaishnav who acted in the manner of an Avadut. And there's a footnote here. It says, the word Avadut refers to one who is shaken free from all worldly feeling and obligation. He does not care for social conventions, particularly the Varnashram Dharma, and is quite eccentric in his behavior. Nityananda Prabhu is often characterized as an Avadut. So Vangsi Das Babaji Maharaj lived in Navadip under a tree on the banks of the Ganges, demonstrating a very high standard of renunciation. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Thakur was attracted by his, by his Paramahamsa Vaishnav behavior and his disregard for the rules and regulations of society at large. Srila Prabhupada himself paid his obeisances to Babaji Maharaj from a distance, but, not, but did not allow his disciples to go near him. For though Babaji Maharaj was a Paramahamsa Vaishnav, an ordinary beginner in devotional practice would likely misunderstand his indifference to the rules and regulations and end up committing offenses at his feet. The primary purpose of the rules and regulations is to bring pleasure to Shishi Radha Govinda. A practitioner, let me change that. Maybe you can even see what I'm reading. I don't know. A practitioner who has not yet overcome his mundane conditioning may very well judge an advanced Vaishnava according to rules and regulations, which were designed to help him advance to the next level of spiritual realization. If he measures a perfected soul by the standards which have been set for the beginner as a result of committing offenses, he falls down from the devotional path. It is said that Babaji Maharaj had two cloth bags. He kept his Gorni Thai deities in one, Radha Govinda in the, and Radha Govinda in the other. He regularly worshipped them, taking them out of the bags and serving them mentally with mantras. Then after the worship, he would place the deities back in their bags. On occasion, he would leave them outside so that people could look at them. Once in a while, he would offer tobacco to Radha Govinda in a hookah, but not to Nitai Goranga. 
Many people would come from, from uh, sorry, many people would come bringing offerings of rice, fruits, vegetables, flour, or bananas. But Babaji Maharaj would ignore them. When he noticed an accumulation of such offerings, he would mentally offer them to his deities and then distribute the remnants to whoever happened to be present. Who can understand such, uh, how do you say this word? Enigmatic? Enigmatic. Who could understand such enigmatic, enigmatic behavior? Sorry, guys. Enigma, en enig enigmatic. Babaji Maharaj was tall enough to be able to pick fruits for puja from the high branches of a tree without making use of ladders or other paraphernalia. On one occasion, he fell from a tree, and from that time, he, and from that time on, he took on the guise of a lame person. He wore only a kopan, a strip of cloth covering his private parts, and left his hair <clears throat> and he left his hair and beard uncut and unkempt. Babaji, Maharaj, Babaji Maharaja's voyage to Brej. Babaji Maharaj did not stay exclusively in, in the Navadip area, but traveled to many holy places where he also performed his spiritual practices. Um, he embodied the verse Krishna Bhakti Rasa Bhavita Mati. Am I speaking too closely into the mic? Um, he embodied the verse Krishna Bhakti Rasa Bhavita Mati, and wherever he went, he always remained immersed in the ocean of Krishna Ras. Therefore, everything reminded him of Krishna Lila, but especially the banyan tree. Whenever he saw a banyan tree, he would sit under it, taking it to be the Vangshibat, under which Krishna played his fruit to and when, under which Krishna played his flute to attract the gopis. Once he had stationed himself, once he had stationed himself there, it would be difficult to get him to move. <clears throat> On the twelfth of, of Falgun, that is um, thir thirteen forty-seven, which is Monday, February fourteenth, nineteen forty-one, Babaji Maharaj left Navadip city and headed for Vrindavan. He sometimes walked. Sometimes he traveled by ox cart and sometimes by rail. He first went to Katwa, where he stayed for two days under a vat tree near the train station. A vat tree is also, that, that's a banyan tree. Then he took the tree, sorry. Then he took the train to Pagalpur, where he stayed for one day under a vat tree near the station and for four days by the Ganges. Then he traveled to Gaya, where he remained on the banks of the Falugu River for three days. He also stayed on a boat in the Ganges near Dash, Dashashvamera Ghat in Banaris for three days, spent another three days in Ayodhya by the Surayu River, including three hours under a vat tree at the Tree Vaini confluence at Prayag for ten days, two days at the Vishram Ghat in Mathura, eight days at the Vangshi Vat in Vrindavan, nine days at the Madhya Chada, Madhya Chada on the banks of the Yamuna, What's that? Madhya Chada, I don't know what that is. And one day in, at the Govinda Ji Temple, two days at Kaliya Daha, eight days under a tamal tree on the east bank of, of Suryakund at Nandagram, two days at Pavan Sarovar, four days at the foot of a pilu tree, and then another nine days at Vangshi Vat Ghat in Vrindavan. Wow, that's pretty. Who is keeping record of all that, I wonder? So he wasn't traveling alone then. Somebody was taking note. <laughs> I think it's so funny. He's three hours under a vat tree at, uh, uh, in Ayodhya. <laughs> Very thorough. Okay. Everywhere he went, he remained absorbed in chanting the holy names and meditating on Krishna's form and pastimes. After three months, he returned to Navadip Dham in the month of Jisht. Those who traveled with Babaji Maharaj recounted that when wandering through Raj Mandal, he would sometimes sing songs about Krishna's pastimes, sometimes glorify Navadip Dham, sometimes chant loudly, sometimes laugh madly. Sometimes he would babble incoherently, and oftentimes he would remain completely silent. When visiting a temple, he was often seen muttering confidentially to the deities, disclosing some personal sentiment to them. All in all, his companions were charmed by his devotional absorption. 
and the old Gaudiya Weekly magazine. Further accounts of Babaji Maharaja's travels were given. It is stated there that between 1943 to 1944, he traveled to Ambika Kalna, Kardakpur, Baleshwar, so Soro, Bhadrak, Korda, Kordo Road, and Purushottam Dham. Afterwards, he again visited Gaya, Kashi, Saidpur, Patna, Munger, etc. After traveling to all these places, some devotees from his birthplace in Majid, Majidpur invited him to come for a visit. He acquiesced to their enthusiasm, but found little pleasure in going. He said that it was, it was a place which the Pandavas had neglected. What is it called? Pandav Varjita Desh. Srilamadav Goswami Maharaj's encounter with Babaji Maharaj. Oh wow, this is long. Let's see how long, how much longer is it? Anyways, if you don't mind staying for a, a bit longer, I'm gonna read to the end. What time is it? Oh my God, it's nearly 11 p.m. <laughs> okay. Shilamadav Goswami's, oh sorry, Shilamadav Goswami Maharaj's encounter with Babaji Maharaj. The founding acharya of the Sri Chaitanya Gaudiya Math my spiritual master, Nitila Pravishta Om Vishnupad, Srimad Bhakti Dait Madhav Goswami Maharaj, told his disciples a story about a personal encounter he had with Vangshi Das Babaji Maharaj. Gurudev founded an ashram in Mid Medinipur city. Um, it's called Shri Shamananda Gaudiya Math, with the help of two of his godbrothers, Srila Bhakti Vichar Jajabar Goswami Maharaj and Srila Bhakti Kumuj Santa Goswami Maharaj. On one occasion, Babaji Maharaj was traveling and passed through Medinipur. When Gurudev received news that Babaji Maharaj was coming with a group of devotees by ox cart, he immediately sent a disciple to invite him and his other companions to visit the Mat. Babaji Maharaj promised the disciple that he would come, and so Gurudev st uh, started to make preparations to receive the party of pilgrims. However, after the midday offering in Arati, no one from Babaji Maharaj's party came. Srila Gurudev waited for some time and finally took several of his disciples and went looking for him. When Babaji Maharaj had entered the city with his party, he had seen a vat tree and had taken it to be Vangshi Vat. He had camped there and planned for, for and plans, uh, there's a mistake here in the book. He camped there and planned for, to make, anyways, he plans to make an offering to his deities and feed his party there. When he saw Gurudev, Babaji Maharaj remembered his affection for Srila Prabhupada and offered him some sweet rice prasad, which Gurudev accepted, accepted respectfully. I often heard Gurudev say how delicious the sweet rice tasted that day. And now Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Goswami Maharaj reminisces. Our Shiksha Guru, most, most revered do you say most revered or most revered? Anyways, I'm going to say revered. Our Shiksha Guru, most revered Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Goswami Maharaj, also told us a few anecdotes about Babaji Maharaj. Incidents that he had witnessed personally. Once a pile of fruits intended for the service of the deities had accumulated at Babaji Maharaj's cottage by the Ganges, and Baba would not let anyone lay a finger on it. One day, however, a cow entered the cottage and ate all the fruits. Though they tried, no one was able to drive the cow away. <laughs> Meanwhile, Babaji Maharaj watched and laughed, clapping his hands. Out of curiosity, I asked Baba's disciple, whose name was Purna or Punya, why ba sorry, I asked Baba's disciple whose name was Purna or Punya, why Baba, why Baba was laughing. He said, Last night, a thief stole all the deities. What? Oh my God, that's heavy. He said, last night, a thief stole all the deities and cooking pots. Now a cow has come and eaten all the fruits. 
So he is besides himself with joy and is laughing and saying, one thief grieves and another thief takes away. Sorry, one thief gives and another thief takes away. Krishna is the supreme thief. Srila Bhakti Dait Madhav Goswami Maharaj continues. Babaji Maharaj never allowed anyone to touch his feet, except once on the day after Falguni Purnima, the festival celebration of Jagannath Mishra. Babaji Maharaj was so ecstatic that he forgot his rule and became as generous as a desire tree. So on that day, I was fortunate enough to get the dust of his lotus feet. I also had the good fortune of getting his prasadi leftovers. We have heard that Babaji Maharaj took Babaji Vesh from our Param Gurudev, Srila Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj. Babaji Maharaj relished hearing devotional songs. One day, he heard Srila Bhaktivinu Thakur's couplet, Tyajiya Shayana Sukha Vichitra Palanka Kabe Vrajer Dhulaya Dhusarahabe Anga that's by Nartam Das Thakur. That's the Hari Hari Kabe Habo Vrindava Anavasi. When will I give up the pleasure of sleeping in a comfortable bed and roll in the dust of Vrindavan? Tears rolled down from his eyes and his voice choked. Babaji Maharaj said, You are only singing a song. It only bursts open for oh, sorry, it only bursts open for those who have burst op- for those who have burst open. It only bursts open for those who have burst open. <laughs> In other words, we only sing the songs of the Mahajans, but we feel no emotion. When the dust of the holy places covers our bodies, we only think of brushing it off. We have no idea of its value. <laughs> Another day, however, someone started singing one of the new fangled invented mantras that contradicts Siddhanta and divine sentiment. Babaji Maharaj said, that name is not allowed here. One gentleman often came to visit Babaji Maharaj and kept asking him for his mercy. One day, Baba finally became impatient. He took off his kopan and handed it to the gentleman and said, you want my mercy? Here it is, take it. The visitor was frightened by the manner in which Babaji challenged him. We have heard that all perfections come from the grace of the Vaishnavas, but we do not have the sincerity necessary to really take their blessings when they are given. What is the use of repeatedly imploring them to be merciful if we don't mean it? We had an elderly godbrother named Gokul Das Babaji. His family home was not far from that of Babaji Maharaj. Gokul Das Baba went frequently to see Bangshi Das Babaji Maharaj, and when they got together, they would joyfully converse about Krishna and their Memen Singha dialect. Interesting. Memen Singha dialect. Never heard of that. I'm going to have to look that up. Okay, so now here's the last part of Babaji Maharaj's teachings. It's a bunch of question, question and answers. What time is it? Okay. Babaji Maharaj was normally occupied with his devotional activities. He minded his own business and spoke little. He would talk to his own deities, sometimes laughing, sometimes crying desperately, but he did not speak much to others. Many people would come to him. Often they would ask him questions. Mostly he remained silent, and if he took any notice at all, he would usually answer indirectly. If he, did, uh, if he did give spiritual instruction, he would rarely cite scripture, but always spoke from his personal realization. In two or three short fra- phrases, he would make a deep impression on the listener. Once, he had a regular visitor who kept asking him, how can we attain God? Uh, Babaji Maharaj just remained silent, giving the questioner no answer. One day, he suddenly looked at his visitor and asked him, What do you want? The fellow replied, I want to find God. Babaji Maharaj answered in one word, 
cry. <laughs> those who visited, uh, those who visited, those who visited him occasionally reported the short answers that he gave to their answers to their questions. I mean, some of these were noted down and are given here. Okay, so here are some of the questions. Question. Baba, what should we do? Answer. If you worship Nitai, you will get gore. All your unhappiness will disappear, and you will begin to feel real joy. Question. How can one become free from the demands of the senses? Answer. Shuniya Govinda Rab, Apani Palabi Sab, Singha Rabe Jata Kori Gan. They will all flee at the sound of Govinda's name, just as the deer flees at the sound of the lion's roar. That's from Prem Bhakti Chandrika by Nartan Das Thakur. Question. Baba, is there no happiness even in your world? In, in your world? In your world? I don't get that. Anyways, answer. There is no joy here unless you worship Gaur Nitai. This is, my, uh, this is my eternal world, while this world of yours is an illusion. Happiness in this world is like the laughing or crying of a dreaming baby. Question. How can we tell if we have received blessings of Krishna or the Vaishnavas? Answer. Je kore tomara ash, tare koro sarva nash. You ruin everything for someone who aspires to attain you. Kaha <laughs> keo takade, kaharo takane. To some he gives money, while he makes others penniless. Tomastani aparadhe nahi paritran. There is no pardon for an offense at your, at the Vaishnav Thakur's feet. Mm. Why false vanity? Who will deliver you? To whom should I explain? Sorry, to whom, shall, shall, to whom should I explain? Who will understand? I haven't got the slightest bit of attachment to the Vaishnavs. Okay, question. How will I attain Krishna's mercy? Answer. You will get his mercy by crying. Who really cries? If you cry with tears of love, you will get the Lord's mercy. Mukhe bolo hari hari, I'm sorry, Mukhe bolo hari, kaje, kaje anyakori, prema vari choke elona. I recite Hari's names, but I act otherwise, so the tears of love do not well up in my eyes. Question. How can we be happy? In renunciation or in enjoyment? Answer. There are saintly persons on the Sarayu River who chant the names of Sitaram. They are happy. They know no distress. Those who stay with King Duryodhan know no joy. Those who are with King Yudhishthir are happy. Happiness and distress, enjoyment and renunciation, are twins. Some people enjoy and some renounce. Question. Have you ever been to Mayapur? Answer. Yes. Some call it Mayapur. Some call it Navadip. They are building, uh, there are buildings all, all over the Mayapur temple site, and the deity is worshipped under a neem tree. I once went to Mayapur with a torn wrapper and a water pot. Shachi Nandan Goshai, Mahaprabhu, came and took my water pot. I sat down and waited, and a few minutes later, Shachi Nandan Gosai came and gave it back. Then I came back here. <laughs> okay. Babaji Maharaja's disappearance day was the Shravan Shukla Chaturthi. Jai Shri Vangshri Das Babaji Maharaj Ki Jai. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 
हरे राम 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 हरे हरे नीताय गोर हरि बोल हरि बोल हरि बोल गोर हरि बो नीताय गोर हरि बोल हरि बोल हरि बो नीताय गोर हरि बो जय श्री श्री गुरु गौरंग गंदाय विक गिरिधारी श्री श्री राधा विनोर बिहारी जू की जाय श्री गोविंद गोपीनाथ मरण मोहन जू की जाय निथिल प्रविष्टम विष्णुपाद अश्वतर अश्वत शिशिमार भक्ति वेदांत नारायण गोसाई महाराज श्री गुरुदेव की जाय निथिल प्रविष्टम विष्णुपाद अश्वतर अश्वत शिशिमार भक्ति वेदांत वामन गोसाई महाराज की जाय निथिल प्रविष्टम विष्णुपाद अश्वतर अश्वत शिशिमार भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी महाराज श्री प्रभुपाद की जाय निथिल प्रविष्टम विष्णुपाद अश्वतर अश्वत शिशिमार भक्ति विज्ञान केशव गोसाई महाराज की जाय निथिल प्रविष्टम विष्णुपाद शिल भक्ति वेदांत स्वयं साय भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती गोसाई प्रभु पार की जाय निथिल प्रविष्ट महाभागवत शिल गोक्षर स्पावजी महाराज की जाय निथिल प्रविष्ट शिल सच्चरानंद भक्ति विनोद ठाकुर की जाय निथिल प्रविष्ट वैष्णव सार्वभौम शिल जगन्नाथ दास पावजी महाराज की जाय श्री रूप नो गौरिय गुरु वर्ग की जाय श्री रूप सनातन भट्ट रघुनाथ श्री जीव गोपाल भट्ट दास रघुनाथ शार्ड गोसाई प्रभु की जाय श्री स्वरूप दामदार राय रामानंदारी श्री गौर प्रसाद वृंद की जाय नाम चय श्ल हरिदास ठाकुर की जाय प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री आद्वैत गदाधार शिवासरी गौर भक्त वृंद की जाय श्री क्षेत्र मंडल गौर मंडल व्रज मंडल मथुर वृंदावन धाम की जाय सर्व अभिष्ट प्रदात गिरिराज महाराज की जाय श्री राधा कुंद श्याम कुंड की जाय श्री यमुन देवी गंगा देवी की जाय श्री तुलसी महारानी वृंद देवी की जाय श्री भक्ति देवी की जाय श्री पूर्णमासी योग माय की जाय श्री गोपेश्वर महादेव की जाय श्री हरि नाम संकीर्तन की जाय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जाय श्री रघुनंदन ठाकुर की जाय तो तिरुभावतीति की जाय श्री वंशीदास बाबा जी महाराज की जाय तो तिरुभावतीति की जाय स्वापाशाद शिल प्रभुपार की जाय शिल भक्ति बालव तीर्थ गोसाई महाराज की जाय शिल भक्ति भक्ति दायित्व माधव गोसाई महाराज की जाय शिल भक्ति भक्ति प्रमोद पुरी गोसाई महाराज की जाय स्वापाशाद शिल प्रभुपार की जाय श्री हरि नाम संकीर्तन की जाय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जाय समागत गौर भक्त वृंद की जाय श्रीनिताय गौर प्रेमानंदे हरि हरि वो वृंदाय तुलसी देवाय प्रियाय केशवाश्च कृष्ण भक्ति पद देवी सत्यवताय नमो नम वंशकल्पतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम धनवा प्रणाम सरी सी यू ऑल टुमारो फॉर द किलिंग ऑफ देना देना कसूरा हरिपुर